I totally forgot to film the intro to this YouTube video, but welcome back to my channel. Um, my name is Stephanie. I'm into clean beauty, um, but I am somebody who has been very acne prone throughout my entire life. And it's been a while, but I finally was able to compile and try out some cleaner beauty that's acne safe, so it should not trigger any acne issues. And it is drugstore. So we can save money while still looking fabulous and not causing our faces to freak out. Um, if you have missed me, I did have a baby. She is five and a half months old. So my IVF journey of eight and a half years is over. I am more active on Instagram and TikTok. If you do miss me, you can follow me there. But um, yeah, all is well. I'm hopeful to get back into more YouTube soon. But if you are interested in this drugstore acne safe cleaner beauty makeup tutorial, then let's get into it. I have my bag of goodies from Ulta and the drugstore. So I'm just going to do this routine the way I do my makeup. Some steps you may do, some steps you may not do, but either way, all of these products have been researched and tested by me for several weeks. And yeah, I hope it helps you. So to start, I'm going to go in with the L'Oreal True Match Foundation, the original. Um, this now comes in a pump if you have not shopped it in a while. It used to be like a bottle. Um, also, if you don't like this formula for whatever reason, you want something even more lightweight um, or like more skincare infused, I also really love the L'Oreal Tinted Serum with the dropper. I, I'm not sure which one I like better out of the two. The problem is right now I don't have a good shade match in that serum formula because of the lighter shade, I think it's shade three, four, it pulls really pinky beige on me and I'm definitely more gold and yellow. So I like the fact that the L'Oreal True Match foundation has way more shades. You definitely can find a shade match in this formula. Um, I'm wearing shade W4 right now. I do need to self tan, so it might be a hair, hair dark, but we make it work. So I like putting it in the palm of my hand like this instead of on the back because I find that when I'm putting it on the palm of my hand, um, it doesn't get as abs as absorbed into the skin. So, okay. And I'm going to just buff this around my face, not under the eyes or around the eyes. And I'm also gonna try to avoid um, not too much on my forehead because that can settle into fine lines and wrinkles. So really, unless you're truly covering something on your forehead that you have a problem with, I would not go too nutso. Oh, you know what? I just remembered. I probably should have done brows first, but you know, here we are real life here and I'm not going to redo it. So just so you know, the brow products I use probably should have been done first and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, I also don't like to do too much on the nose. Foundation on the nose can also tend to go a little cakey quicker. So forehead and nose, unless you're like really covering something specific, I would avoid. And so what I love about the L'Oreal True Match foundations is how incredibly skin-like they look. They look very similar to the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk, which I actually did a split face wear test for on my Instagram a few weeks ago. I don't think it's saved, unfortunately, but I love the, the um, Armani Luminous Silk, but I also love the L'Oreal and I think they look almost identical like nobody would know if you told them you know otherwise okay let's do brows while this foundation sits into my skin and then we'll talk about concealer because that was something that actually held up this review for quite a while because i um was having a really hard time finding one that i truly felt was like a good dupe for high end because that's the other thing not only are these cleaner and acne safe products, but I also wanted them to perform like just as good as the high-end alternatives that I tend to use. So anyway, um, for brows, I am doing NYX products, the NYX Micro Brow Pencil. This is a classic. It's been around forever. It is really good for a reason. It works just as well as the Anastasia Beverly Hills Pencil. I would say not as good as Benefit, but it's pretty close. Um, and then the NYX Brow Glue, I used shade clear. They do make other tinted versions, but again, don't have a perfect shade match in the tinted version, so I'd rather just use clear. Now, this is not firm hold the way I prefer my Benefit 24 hour brow setter to be. However, it's pretty good. And as long as you're not actually touching your face all day, it does a pretty good job. And this is one that's very well loved because it doesn't give like a hard crispy hold. 
Some people like hard crispy holds, I do. Some people don't, they prefer more of a softer hold. So if that's you, you'll like this. The reason I like to use this before foundation is it is kind of like a gluey texture and I don't know if you're gonna see on camera, but it will get covered in foundation. If you put your foundation around your brows and then brush this through, it can be a little gluey. So if you put it on before your makeup, you will not have that problem because then you can just apply your foundation around. So I did my best not to put too much foundation near the brow, so let's go in and do that. Um, in the brow pencil, I am using shade Taupe. And like I said, I have used this for years and years and years. I will say, and I've talked about this on my Instagram as well, definitely where I am more active lately. Um, the difference with high-end products and drugstore for the most part is usually your drugstore products are going to be a little more full of filler ingredients and not as much pigment or skincare ingredients or things like that. Like it's just kind of garbage ingredients to just fill up the product, you know? Um, so when that happens, when you're using like a watered down version of something, you're gonna tend to run out of the product faster. So although it looks cheaper at first, you're more likely gonna be buying more throughout the year of their drugstore products versus if you could just invest in the high end. But I know it's not always possible for people to be dropping that kind of money, especially right now, on something high end. So in this scenario, here is your alternative. It's going to look very, very similar to the high end alternative. And you know, for someone who maybe doesn't you know wear makeup every single day, I can understand why it would make sense not to care if you're uh, splurging. So I do feel like I'm running through this pencil quicker though. It is more of like a dry application, which I like. I don't want my brow pencils too waxy and creamy because then you really blow through them quick. I actually used to use this pencil in my pro makeup kit when I would do freelance because it was affordable and I could get a ton of different shades for all different color hair. Um, NYX brow pencils, they do come in several shades, even auburn. And um, so for that, it's nice because you'll definitely find a, a color that should flatter your skin and hair. Once I fill in the top and bottom, I like to just brush through to soften the color. And I have to really work on the tails for me. I want to make sure I'm not pulling them down too much, but I also find that over here on this brow specifically, it's a little patchy. Like it won't stick to my skin as well. I don't know why. Next, we're going to talk about concealer. So this is an area I had a very hard time finalizing my thoughts, and here's why. At the end of the day, I think it just comes down to your skin type and what you're looking for in a concealer. And the two that I want to recommend to you are by L'Oreal, again, <laughs> and e.l.f. So this was the one I had recommended for the longest time. It's honestly kind of old, um, but it's the L'Oreal Age Perfect Radiant Concealer. This is an incredible formula. It performs very much like a high end. It's kind of like a serum, reminds me a lot of like the NARS Radiant Creamy. Um, it is just very creamy. And the shade range is really nice. The one that I'm using is shade, oh God, I don't even know if they have that anymore, Sand. Love this color, but what I was finding is that although it looks really beautiful under my eyes. It was not playing nice with the only acne safe cleaner powder I could find. And since I tend to set my under eyes always, this was a problem. So this one does not play as well with powder under the eyes if you are going to use the powder that I'm going to share in a moment. I would say this one is best if you are drier, more mature and won't plan on setting your under eyes, okay? Now on the other end of the spectrum, we have the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. Make sure it's the hydrating camo because the other one is more matte. That one I did not vet. That one I don't really even like under the eyes because it is so matte. This one, even though it says hydrating camo concealer, please do not think that this is super hydrating. It's actually a little drying in my opinion, especially when you compare it to this one. So this is gonna pack a lot of coverage punch and it also plays better with the powder, not the best, but much better. And so if you're gonna go with this one, I want you to be somebody who's a little bit more normal to oily, um, somebody who really wants more coverage, and someone who 
tends to set their under eyes with concealer. My one tip with this is a little goes a very long way. Please, please go in with a light hand with this. Don't use as much as you think because it's intense. Um, the other thing I wanna say about this is prep your skin before you use it. So please make sure you are moisturizing your face before you go in with your makeup. And you might even wanna consider putting on some kind of an eye serum or an eye cream because like I said, although it says hydrating concealer, I don't find it to be that hydrating. In fact, when I put it on, it does kind of dry down and it feels a little bit drier. So with that said, all in all, both of these incredible options will have them linked. Today I'm gonna to go on with the e.l.f. just because I find it plays a little bit better with the powder. Again, with the e.l.f. I'm using shade Light Beige. And so I'm only using these little dots where I really need the concealing the most, which is always the inner corner. And then I put a little bit out here because we tend to be a little bit red out there, you know? And if I had like anything that was really bothering me throughout the rest of my face, I would go in and deal with that. But today I feel like my skin has been doing really nice. So I'm gonna go in with the opposite end of this brush and gently tap, 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 tap the color in where you really want the coverage the most and let it kind of sit there so it dries down. But you could see like that is like so much product for such a little bit amount that I put on. Same thing out here, tap, tap, tap. And then I will kind of dust it a little bit. Like dust it, you know what I mean? <laughs> you see what I'm doing. Like drag it down here. Cause again, I have the darkest in this in inside corner, which I feel like that's pretty much for everybody. And then if you are older, let me recommend using your fingers to really press and pat it into your skin. The reason is any kind of swiping motion with a brush or a sponge is going to um, exacerbate any little dry patches or fine lines. Whereas if you're using the warmth of your finger, it will have the product melt into the skin a little bit better. Honestly, it's fa it's a faster way to blend out too. Um, and just like I said, the heat from your fingers, the warmth from your fingers really has it melt and um, like become one with your skin. And it's just gonna make, especially the under eye makeup, look a lot more natural. She is pigmented. I probably could have even used less to be totally honest. Okay, but I mean, she's great coverage, so. All right, with that, I wanted to give you guys a cream bronzer slash um, like contour stick. Hard to find in the drugstore at that price point, but what I did find is by Nude Sticks, and this is a mini. So this is a high-end product, but it's a mini, and since you're not using a lot of this product, I felt like I didn't, I didn't think it was, you know, a big deal. I think the stick is $12. And since you're only, like I said, using it in a little bit, little bit of your face, it should last you a decent amount of time, especially since it is high end. So the best way you're gonna get this to apply is to put it on the back of your hand or the palm of your hand and then tap it on. I'm gonna do it both ways so you can kind of see. So if I draw it, drew it on here, okay? Those are like the places I would apply it. All right, and then I'm gonna take a fluffy synthetic kind of brush. Any any kind of brush like this will do. When you blend it out like this, sometimes the little the lines you make will kind of stay, and we don't really want that. Now this is a good formula, the NYX, but let's say you're not using that NYX, that nude sticks one. Sorry, I said NYX. Um, sometimes it does that, and then it'll drag your makeup and your foundation around and you don't want that either. So any good makeup artist is going to apply this to her hand first, okay? And then again, the melting, the warmth of the hand will just make the product apply to your skin so much more naturally. And see how that just like buffed right onto my skin and it looks like it's just my own natural skin being that color. And that's what we want. Same thing with the nose, you can kind of just tap it in there and cheeks here just really melts in nicely. Okay. I 
for the high-end version of like a contour stick. There are so many out there. Rare Beauty is a good one. Um, Merit is a great one. Dibs Beauty makes beautiful cream bronzer sticks in so many different tones. Um, honestly, even this one in just the full size would be a great option too if you wanted to splurge on it. So, all right, there's your cream bronzer. At this point, I think I'm ready to do powder. <laughs> I'm a little nervous about it, but let's just go for it. The powder that I found that's talc free, acne safe, and cleaner is by CoverGirl. It's the Clean Fresh Powder, and I picked it up in shade Light. I tend to go with lighter powders, even though I'm more like a medium olive tan skin, um, just because I, when powders go onto the skin, they will oxidize a little bit, and so it's always good to um, go a little bit lighter. That way, if it dries a little bit darker, you don't look crazy. So take a, a powder puff or a brush. If you are older, more mature, these puffs may not be the best for you if you're using pressed powders because it will apply a little bit more makeup than you might want. So in that case, I would definitely use like a smaller fluffy brush to gently press it on. So something like fluffy like that and just tinier. And then you would just take the powder, dust it off, pat, pat, pat very lightly. But for those of you who, but for those of you who want a little bit more, you can go in with the powder and then I like to just rub it on my skin, the palm of my hand to really work in the powder into the puff and remove any excess. And then I will look down and set where I put that concealer. And you'll see because it is a light colored powder, it's not translucent. It's going to add just a hint of color and brightness, especially if you're using a lighter color. But there's the difference between the side that has the powder and that has no powder. Again, it looks brighter, smoother. Um, it's just over time, like I said, this powder, maybe it's just the powder, I don't know. I haven't been able to figure it out, but honestly, this is the only acne safe, cleaner, talc free powder on the market at the drugstore right now. I literally searched high and low. You will not find another one. <laughs> um, so. This is the option we've got to work with. And I don't really like to put powder out much elsewhere, like right here in this like center area, especially on the eye area where I crease. That's really the only places you'll see me putting it on. The palette that I recommend, if you really want to stick with clean, is the Honest Beauty eyeshadow palette. This is in the Get It Together palette. Um, it's a full of like warmer and cooler and more neutral colors. What I like about this is it's gonna have a bone shade, a matte bone shade, and a matte black shade. So that's perfect for just like highlighting, using as an eyeliner. It also has great dark browns for liner, a couple shimmer sh tones for the lid, and a few matte colors for the crease. So it really covers all bases. I actually use this for my daughter's recital. She's five. Um, but the price point isn't that cheap to be totally honest. Um, ironically, to be totally honest. I think it was like $27. So I told this to people on Instagram as well. If you want it to just splurge a few more bucks on an eyeshadow palette and you're an everyday neutrals kind of a person, I would splurge on these from Dose of Colors. This is in the Baked Browns colors. And I love this because it's all matte, which is what I think is just more flattering overall um, for an everyday eye. Um, and these are also talc free and cleaner. But We'll stick with this one because it's the Technical Clean Beauty brand. So I'm going to go in with this matte color here and gently pat it on the lid. These tones are nowhere near as warm as like the Dose of Colors palette or even most of the warm eyeshadows I tend to gravitate towards. I'm taking just the lightest application of this and just gently buffing it all the way up to the brow bone and out. Just to give like a hint of color on the lid. I don't want anything smoky or dramatic because this is just like every day, you know? Not, and probably not even every day for most of you. <laughs> so I just want to give you an idea of how the product works. The formula is nice. It's not my like best eyeshadow I've ever used. I find the colors are a little bit dark. So you have to definitely use a light hand. But again, it really is nice that it has so much variety of tones 
finishes and I like that she included a dark brown and a black and a light matte. Those are like so important when you're looking for an eyeshadow palette. So, okay. From there, I'm gonna take this, um, it's like a copper shimmer. And I'm just gonna press it on my lid with my finger. I'm gonna use the mirror from the palette. It's pretty. It warms it up for me. It looks kind of orange, but we're gonna blend it out. Has some pretty shimmer in there. Okay, take that brush that we just used before and just kind of buff. We don't want any harsh edges. All right. A little down here. Whatever's left. Easy peasy. We're gonna take a very tiny detail brush and you can either go in with the black or the brown, whatever you feel best about. I'm gonna do the brown. It's almost black, it's super dark. Very, a lot of um, a lot of fallout, so just be careful. And then I'm gonna use this as like a little bit of an eyeliner, just on the outer half of the eye here. It's a, like I'm doing a little baby wing, but nothing too sharp. Like that is, that is the extent of my like glam life lately. Sorry. I think that just about does it for your everyday eye in my opinion. If you want it, you can take like that light pinky champagne and pop it in the inner corner. But honestly, that's just not my life right now. <laughs> um, and that's that. With that being said, I will go in with a nude liner for the waterline. I've been using this forever. This is the Essence Extreme Lasting Nude Liner. Just a, a waterline. Okay, now that the eyes are done, we can do blush and bronzer. And these are probably two of the favorite things from this look that I picked up. They look rough because I have been using them very often in my everyday routine. Um, this bronzer from Revlon in Skin Light, the Skin Lights Bronzer in Sunkissed, the Skin Lights Bronzer in Sunkissed Beam is such a dupe for Hourglass. It's wild. And the same with this. This is the Essence Pure Nude Baked Blush and Pink Flush. They have a few different shades of these. I almost wish I had something a little bit peachier and warmer for my skin tone, but they make it. I just couldn't pick it out online and I just didn't get to the store to see it in person. However, again, I love formulas like this because they remind me of Hourglass. Hourglass has this beautiful baked sheen to the finish of the formulas that really gives the skin a healthy lit from within glow without being dewy or sticky or creamy. So those of you who have a hard time with creams or you are just my age, like I would say 30, 35 and older, who don't want to look flat matte anymore, but yet like powders, this is the type of powder you want to look for. Something that has that baked sheen to it because it just looks naturally radiant on the skin. And I've just been obsessed with these two. Like they're incredible dupes for hourglass formulas. Not talked about enough. And so we're going to go in with the bronzer first and just kind of go over all those areas. We did the cream contour. My forehead, I go a little heavy on bronzer with because I kind of am like setting the face there too. I'm patting in the cheek area because I don't want to move the cream bronzer either or the foundation for what it's worth. So I pat first because it's cream there lightly. And then if you want to do a little buffing, you can. And then now same thing with this blush, pick it up. The blush has a lot more fallout than the bronzer. It's also a lot cheaper. Essence just tends to be more affordable. And again, press this in. Very pretty baby pink color. So again, this is the one that I do wish I picked up a little bit more brighter, maybe like warmer pinky color, peachy. But this is still very pretty. Again, it's pink flush. It said golden pink when I picked it out, so I thought it would have like a little bit more of like a NARS orgasm feel to it but I don't mind it. I tend to be a little heavy handed with blush sometimes and this allows me to go a little wackadoo without feeling like 
I need to blend it out hardcore, you know? Now you see, I have like that beautiful radiance on the skin, but it's powder. So that's that. Um, I'm gonna just do a little more of a blend down here. Just to make sure things are a little more seamless. We wanna do setting powder first, or setting spray, sorry. We're almost done. Two setting sprays that I've trialed out, and these are dupes for MAC Fix Plus or MAC, um, Fi MAC Setting Spray, the alcohol-free one. I've been loving both of those, but they are not clean or acne safe, or no, they're not clean, they are acne safe. Um, these two, awesome, awesome, awesome drugstore makeup setting sprays. Now, they do two things. One, they do help your makeup last maybe a hair longer, but what I really like them for, especially if you are, like I said, 35 and older, or you are a little bit drier, these are gonna like melt the makeup into your skin a little bit better. So if there is any powderiness that you're not liking, using a mist like this at the end before you do your mascara, game changer to give your skin the dewy, healthy looking glow. So, this one is the NYX Dewy Finish Spray. This one is ELF Stay All Night Blue Light Micro Setting Mist. Neither one is going to be super dewy. <laughs> but I would say go with this one from ELF if you are normal to oily and go with this one if you are normal to dry. However, they are very very similar and when I use them I did not see a huge difference in the way that they worked on my skin this one has that in it this one does not very similar both have great misters um, for today I'm gonna use the NYX now that we set the face then I feel comfortable going in with mascara and setting the brows so again we're using the NYX brow glue in clear I wish I would have done this before foundation but whatever I like to kind of get the product on the brow hairs first and then I will go in and pull them into place. This is not firm hold, just so you know. It's going to be more of like a waxy hold. So I just like to brush the front up a little bit and then as we get towards the edge, the ends, I'll pull them down. I think they look okay from what I can tell. And our mascara. CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean. I really like this one. Um, this is a formula, like the Lash Blast has been around since I would think was in high school, so very long time, very well loved. I feel like this performs the Lash Blast Clean just like the regular Lash Blast. I've used the green and the orange one. Um, it's not like ultra lengthening or ultra vol volumizing. I would say it's a very average mascara. This is in black though. They do make this one in brown, however. So I'm just gonna go in and apply a few layers or a few coats of this. Just a touch on the lower lashes. Last is Lippy. ColourPop Lippy liners are great clean options at the drugstore. ColourPop actually does a decent amount of clean makeup in general, um, but this is shade BFF. I've had it for a while, it's well loved. It's a great nude. It looks a lot like nude, iconic nude from Charlotte Tilbury. I do like to kind of soften lip liner. I don't like that harsh liner look. And then another star of the show with these clean drugstore products is this gloss from About Face. This is a complete dupe for Fenty Beauty's Fussy Lip Gloss maybe better because i don't love the flavor of the fenty glosses that like fake fruit punchy this is mint and it's more pillowy and cushiony so this is again about face shade angel on fire stunning looks so good with a lip liner Ooh. Sorry, looks so good on its own and also looks great over any color lipstick, especially like nudie ones. That is it, folks. Let's take this clip out. What do we think of this look? 
I've shared this on Instagram, like doing a makeup live, but never got to share it on YouTube. And I wanted to do this here because I wanted you guys to have this as a resource to check back on. Save on the makeup you can, like go budget on these products because they will perform so nicely and splurge on good skincare because when your skin is in a good place, almost any makeup is going to look nice. So I feel good about these products because they are good, but even better because of the skincare that I've been using, it has just made, you know, the makeup shine so much more so i love this i love being able to do budget friendly makeup and a splurge on my skincare and that's what you know i think a lot of people are probably in that same mindset um i'll continue to keep my eye out for new things that pop up on the market but for now everything will be listed below you can shop this anytime and if you try these products in different shades or even the same ones please report back and let me know how you do but thanks so much for watching and subscribe if you like these kinds of things